Hello, I'm Emma Hartnell Baker. Welcome to the Speech Sound Picks approach. I created this approach because I'm a special educational needs advisor. And I believe that to create a truly inclusive education, we have to include everybody. And that's how everybody's brains work. Because we don't tend to have brain scans handy in primary school, what we do is presume every child has got a dyslexic brain, has speech and language difficulties, any other kind of learning challenges. Not only does this work for every single child, it's fun. Are you ready, Nicholas? Yeah. Hold on. I realised it was on. Okay, we won. One fish. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Where's the ooh sound? To ooh, and where's another ooh sound? But look, ooh, you're too clever. Are you ready? I'm going to trick you this time. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. Where's the coo? Where's the shh? Oh, where's another sh? Where's another sh? Where's another sh? Where's another sh? Where's an ooh? Where's an ooh? New! Ah, oh, you're too clever! This one has a little star. This one has a little car. See what a lot of fish there are. Where's an ah? There's an ah. Where's another ah? If they're going to spell the word ant, they would think, how many sounds? Ant, ant, and then they draw the lines, and then the one, two, threes underneath. In prep, I definitely do the one, two, three, four, whatever underneath, because it helps them with their ordering, with their segmenting. Um, the first clip, you'll see um, a little boy j just doing this process with me. Excuse the noise in the background. I just set a um, Santa on a skateboard loose, so the children, of course, were very excited about it. Um, the second clip you'll see is another child, um, uh, another preppy, so another five-year-old, who... Um, it's a bit later on, so the children are no longer doing the one, two, threes underneath, but he's still using this method of working out how to spell words. And it carries on all the way through primary school. Ka-ow. So that's ka-ow. And you do it down. Do ow. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Do Just do one, two, three underneath so I can see which one it is. Do ow. No. Boyd, give me a high five. I'm so impressed with you. Hold you... oh, no. <laughs> on. I'll show you. Ah, <laughs> ah. Uh, uh. so it's actually ah. Uh. It's an A. That's an ah. Uh. Mm. What do you think might be for the uh? Um. Ah, uh. A U. It could be. Put a U there. Ah, uh. uh. The. What's the the sound? This done. This Excuse us both chewing away, by the way. It was Christmas and we were having a few jelly beans. Um, now, the reason that he's doing this thumb, if you're wondering why I'm saying this thumb and he's looking at his thumb, is because when the children, the children in yellow level have learnt... Um, <clears throat> that when they see the TH, it could be the... They, look at, they think of this thumb. It could be the or it could be th. Now, if you just watch carefully as well, when he finishes spelling another, he then wants to spell lolly. So watch what he does. He's actually saying all, or or e as he draws those lines. All, or or e, and then he works out the sound picks. Well done. Good boy. At and up. Z, uh, what uh, could it be? E off. Well done. The king would say, brilliant. The king would say, that's not quite red yet. At, uh, so this, oh, sorry. They would say, that's right. At, um, now, this one is actually an O. That's a funny one, isn't it? Well done. So the king would say, look at all those that you got absolutely perfectly, according to the king. Wow. <laughs> at, uh, the, uh, fantastic. Which word? Which word? Lolly. Lolly. Oh, 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 e. Well done. Oh, 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 e. Which one? The ones. But we all. Okay. Always. Do I? You ready? Why yo? How? What did you hear? What can you hear? Oh, I, 
is that kind of eye. So what do we do? Jump. Yes. Can I scan yours as well? This is amazing. So that frog is nice. Oh, look, nice. I. So what will it be? I. What did you, which ones did you put? So you put the soot there, which is just, that's just another sound for soot, but we're going to use this one. Speech, and we start with print. The pictures are illustrations of the last resort for helping children learn to read. So think of the illustrations in the book as something to enhance the story and the experience, not as used as a crutch to guess what the text is. And also remember that because children are learning to read very quickly using this approach, children are very quickly actually able to read independently and read um, a wide variety of books. This isn't just about, you know, they're not st stuck on these readers for ages and whatever. And, and they do love the readers because mainly they love the readers because they are gaining success and confidence. Um, but after prep, you can use PM readers if you want to, because by then, if you've used SSP, the children are already reading. If there was one thing I would say that I wanted every single school in Australia to do, it would be to ban anything to do with PM in prep, um, because it not only doesn't help um, children to read as quickly as they possibly can, it actually makes it more difficult for an awful lot of children. So this approach instead does the other way around and we actually teach children how to decode, not guess or memorise. I'll bring it in on Thursday because I'm coming in on Thursday. On, right, Lily! And Oscar! Oscar, that must be an art in there! Uska, that means Uska! There's one face on and oh. <gasps> Let's have a look, go for it, Mrs Lily. It's fish. And it is a fish! <gasps> wow! Look at ish catfish. <laughs> 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 this book is easy to read. It's easy to read, only if you're very clever. Just that was mean. You're very clever. Dogfish. Now I have a sore arm. Oh, what did you do? Because I was jumping on the trampoline last night and then I jumped on the ground and then oh. I fell on my stomach and hurt my arm. Oh, you've got to be careful. Look at what Lily's doing. Ah. Uh, Ish. Well, did, hold on, what's this one? Flat fish. Well done, so remember foot all at flatfish. Let's have a look, is it a flatfish? Oh, it is a flatfish! Mm. Wow, Lil. Oh. Bet your mum is so proud of you, isn't she? Is yeah. she really, really proud of you? Yeah. Is your mum going to come and help next term? Because I'm going to come into your class again as well. I don't know. Oh, I hope she is. I've not seen her for ages. What's this S one then? T uh Ish, and I love that you knew fish. that that was the R sound, starfish, and it is a starfish. Oh, wow. Sh it oh, it is a shellfish. So if you were teaching somebody some prep to children from next year that didn't know, which would you say was the all sound? Where's the all sound pick? Well done, is it just one of them or both of them? Both. Both, it is. Puff, uh, uh, fish. Puff a fish. Well done, puff a fish. Ah, oh, wow. So that must be another uh sound just there. Amazing. D r a g r e. Let's have a look, Holland. D r a g on dragon fish. <gasps> dragon fish. Is there such a thing as a dragon fish? Oh, I bet that's really scary. Oh my goodness, it's got big teeth. <laughs> Wow, hold the book up. Oh, say, my name's Lily and I'm a reader and I'm amazing. My name's Lily and I'm a reader and I'm amazing. Oh, give me a high five and give me a hot hug. I think you're amazing. Mm, thank you, honey. Go out to play. I can jump. Hop. Hop. Oh, how do you know it's a hop? Oh, oh, fantastic. So you looked at the words. Spider? No, it's the bug. Oh, the spider. The, oh, the bug. The bug is on the, the hilltop. 
Hilltop. Oh, okay. The, the bug, bug is on the dustbin. Bin. Oh, why is it not dustbin? Because look, there's a dustbin there. No, it's a bin. Oh, because it just says put it in. Using flat books, of course, also helps us to see where children are struggling with the coat, which parts they're, um, like, for example, here's a little boy who's getting his butt and his dirt the wrong way around, his B's and his D's the wrong way around. I wouldn't have known this if he was able to look at a picture of a bell first, because he'd have said bell, and he would have looked at the picture and changed it. Whereas because he's decoding first and says D L Dell, I know he's actually looking at the sound pick for B and getting it the wrong way around. So then I can actually help him because then I can do some work with him. So again, think about all the things you're doing and how am I able to see, really understand what's going on in that child's brain. Isaac, double trouble. Give me double trouble. Right, you video Isaac doing double trouble. Egg, egg, good egg. Think of the boot. Oh, think of the boot. The boot goes that way. On the hill. Oh, on the hill. How do you know it was hill? Put it all. Oh, her, it, okay. The reason we also don't rush through learning sound picks, um, you know, some people sort of talk about teaching, I don't know, 42 letter sounds in a term. And that's all very well. Some children can cope with that. But the main thing is, is not only recognising a sound pick and what it represents, but also being able to blend all the skills needed for reading and spelling. The underlying foundational skills are what's really important. So, for example, if you look at um, this group, the, these children who are pre-prep so these were they must be you know four four year olds and what have you getting ready for school um i only had about three hours with them over three weeks so what i was doing intensively was helping them to hear the words hear the smaller parts in words blend them and then understand that there is a picture to represent all these speech sounds so if you look at the little girl here what she's doing is even though she's got the flat book she's actually understanding she's not looking for the picture first she's actually looking at the print because she's already understanding even if she doesn't know the sound pic she's looking at she understands the concept so she understands she's supposed to be looking left to right at the sound pics blending them into the word and because she's doing so much blending um, once she, once I tell her what those sound picks are she can actually hear them what's this one then skip skip wow and what's that one As well as a lot of child-centered inquiry learning where the children are discovering the code, there's also the explicit part. Now the children learn in order all of these sound picks, all of these pictures of speech sounds. So they start off with green, go on to purple, then yellow, then blue. So we're starting off with sat pin, sat pin, and we're learning all of the skills for reading and spelling. We want children to become so confident with decoding very, very quickly and early on. They actually become readers, so we can really focus on comprehension, writing and reading for enjoyment and, and what have you. So we're helping children not only learn to read and spell, but want to read and spell and be able to be readers and writers for life. because he's reading the same book. Uh, uh, man, head, tent. His name was John. John had a pen. The fox had a bed. 
Dad. Joe. Dad. Joe. Dad. Joe. <laughs> had a bed. Very, very big cup of milk. The box soon got the cup of milk. Well done. Keep going. Ten to play. Uh, loud voice. A uh, cup. Sat, sat, sat on a rock. Rock in the den. The fox had a very big sip of. Oh. Right now, watch what we're going to do now. We're going to do taking turns. So Sam reads the first word. Nicholas reads the next one, but you've got to point to the words so that you keep track. The. So you'll say that. Wait, what are you saying? You're saying cup. And then you say the next one. <coughs> F F fell. Did you do fell? Fell. Fell. Off. What? Wet. Wet. Rock. Sam. <laughs> Fox. Fox. <laughs> Now what I'm about to show you is some children's go some prep children going through these levels. They'd only been doing SSP for um, about a term and a half. I was going in to mentor their teacher who's now doing it on her own. Um, but these children have only had it for less than two terms and they were already confident up to the blue level which is the most difficult level. So what we do is we build up, we scaffold up systematically but what you're going to see where they are, it looks like they're rote learning. They actually only do that once a week, so they're up to blue level. So they'd only do this once a week, and it takes sort of 15, 15 minutes. To start off with in green, they're just going through sat pin, and they can do that every day because that just takes three minutes. Um, so I'm going to show you the slides of the things that the children um, use for this kind of rote learning, if you like. But obviously, this is a very, very small part of the SSP phonics approach. Very, very small part. But what I want to show you is that the resources that you can have for free, of course, just down download them. Um, these resources help the children to see systematically the way in which we're building up their knowledge of speech sounds and how they link to the sound picks.
So we're making it meaningful, but we're also making sure not one child misses because we are going through the whole of the code. So within prep, children can actually go through all of these sound picks and if they get to the blue level, which is what will definitely happen in, in year one, then they're up to the stage of knowing all of these sound picks, all of these spelling variations. They can recognize all of these sound picks in, in books and what have you. But also, we're then up to the stage of focusing on every single speech sound in the English language. Well, we use the speech sound clouds. There's a speech sound cloud for every speech sound in the English language. And that's when we focus on the, the sound picks that we've missed so far. So, for example, they've only learnt three variations for the speech sound s during the, the levels, then we make sure we're explicitly then teaching all of the others. There are eight spelling variations for the speech sound s, so eight sound picks, so we need to make sure that the children are doing them. Now, SSP Phonics is created so that you can use this in prep in year one, with every single child going into year two confidently reading and spelling and not just able to spell a word thinking about getting it right or wrong but to use skills to be able to tackle any new word and also with reading the skills to be able to tackle even the most unfamiliar of words with confidence. Please do contact me for more info and to request a four-hour PD training for your school. So this is in the order in which we explicitly teach the code. At the same time, the children are also self-discovering. So they're also, a, you can't just teach in this order because otherwise children won't be able to read and spell other than just words um, using the sound picks. So at the same time as doing this, where we do help them, we do give them readers that built, are built of the sound picks they're learning and we give them exam um, opportunities to write using the sound picks they're learning. So that really builds the confidence and the foundational skills. But we're also helping children and discover the code. Anyway, here are the pictures. So these are the ones that they learn in order. Um, and then you'll see just some prep children. As I say, they'd only been doing it two terms, just going through. Now I can't I haven't got time to show you them going through all of them because to go through all of them does take about 15 minutes. Um, but it'll give you a flavour of, of where these children are.
stop because there's someone here who thinks he can be different. When we're doing work like this, Nicholas, we need to be all the same and doing it all together. Boyd? E and B. 
tea. He said the other day that that was at the end. Of, that was in tea. A cup of tea. Mm. Touch. 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 It. Mm. Mrs. Emma, can I tell you something? What? To E, but the E sound is the E A. Oh, divine, is that something you discovered? Uh, Dolphin. Oh, phew. Ooh. Ooh. That's not how we do it. Toe. Oh, I know that's not how you do it. I, sometimes we like to shake it up a little bit. Continue. Continue. Yeah. The year sevens do the last no, one. We did it. If we were yeah. oh, are you sure? Yeah. And a cake. Well, who thinks they can come and tell me? The blue ones? The, the last blue ones. They said they knew the very last ones. Which are the, the ones blue. that. <gasps> no. <laughs> oh my. Wait, shh, I can't hear Emma. Which one's the A? A, and where's the word that shows the A inside it? K A, come on, what's that little line underneath for? Because how do we read it? We go K A K Cake! What's the next one? Oh, are you okay? E! K E! Kia! What about the next one? It's Kia! It's here, not Kia! We've got here! Kia! I, as in. Kia! Do you know I can't hear Emma? And then I'm going to see if anyone can put these words in a sentence. Oh, oh one of my one of Elliot's favourite drinks. Don't let him have it very often though. What's the last one? What's that one? What's this one? Is it lemonade or Coke? Coke. So what's this sound? K. Yes, well done. So that must be the O one. Who's it? Oh, Emma, do you know this one? 